Hello, welcome back to Honors Topics in Physics. Uh, today I want to uh, get into what causes the tides, uh, which we don't have a whole lot of impact on us here, but uh, if you live near the coast, uh, definitely a part of everyday life. So this shows a location called the Bay of Fundy uh, at low tide and at a high tide. And we can see that the water level has risen uh, very significantly. And, um, you know, this is, this is of the, uh, the ocean, uh, and, and that kind of thing. It's a lot of water to, uh, to change in, in height. So let's look at, uh, what causes it. All right. So, uh, first off, if we look at the, the, the earth and the moon, uh, and we're going to focus more on the moon pulling on the earth today, uh, which feels the stronger force of gravity for one another, the earth or the moon. Okay. It's the same. And the Earth pulls on the Moon, the Moon pulls on the Earth. It's the same gravitational force, just different objects in different directions. Okay, so we're, we're looking at uh, the Moon pulling on the Earth. So where is the, the force on the Earth by the Moon uh, the strongest, or is it the, the same everywhere? Well, it's going to be str the strongest where it's the closest. Okay. Um, this is 59 uh, Earth radii away, and this is uh, 61 Earth radii away. So, this side of the Earth is 2 Earth radii closer. Okay, And remember that the force of gravity changes with the distance squared, so it's stronger here uh, than it is here. Not four times as strong, uh, but, but enough, enough stronger to notice to uh, do it, to show a difference. Um, if the pull of gravity on the moon is stronger on your head than your feet, okay, let's say you're a really tall person, what is it doing to you? It's pulling here more than it's pulling here. It's stretching you, okay? It'd be stretching you out, all right? Now, because water, the, 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 uh, the earth is surrounded by water, the, the moon is able to stretch the, uh, the water out. Okay, water is able to move around the Earth as as the uh, as the Earth rotates around. Okay, so what we end up with is uh, on the side closer to the Moon, there's a bulge. Okay, um, and that is what the cause of one of the tides. Okay, it is the difference. Now it's the key word here, difference, because there'll be a test question to you trying to see if you get this. It's the difference in force of in the force of gravity on the opposite sides which cause the tides okay uh, so the uh the sun also uh can cause tides too but um but it it's it's the moon has a greater impact and we'll get into why that is okay um well i guess that is right now um so which has a greater effect okay on the earth science the sun or the moon okay it's the moon Okay, uh, now which has a greater force of gravity on the Earth, the Sun or the Moon? Well, considering the Earth orbits the Sun, it's, it's the Sun. The Sun has a bigger impact. Uh, sorry, the Sun has a bigger uh, force of gravity on the Earth. Why does the, the Moon affect the, the tides more? Well, you might guess what, what's different about the Moon is it's closer. Okay, um, if we compare, if we have two theoretical planets, and uh, here we've got, this is one meter away, this is one me two meters away. Uh, this is the force of gravity, this is one-fourth the force of gravity. So this is one-fourth uh, as strong as the force of gravity is here, okay? So this would have a pronounced effect on the tides, okay? These are different by a factor of four, okay? If I double the distance and I look at how different gravity is on one side versus the other, Okay, I'll just tell you, it's only different by a factor of 2.25. So the further you get away, the uh, the the smaller the, the the difference in gravity is between the sides of the planet. Okay, so um, the moon, even though it's got less gravity, uh, less force of gravity on the uh, on the Earth, has a bigger impact on the tides because it's closer. Because there's a bigger impact on the on the far side and the near side. Um, Okay, so we'll just skip on that. Uh, so again, just kind of showing you this on a graph. Uh, if I change by a distance of one meter, and I'm, and this is, if I'm one meter away or one unit away, um, this is how much this is going to affect the difference in, in size of the planet. Okay, 
if I if I go further away, this is how much the difference is going to be between the sides of the planet. Okay, and as I get even further away, this is the only difference that is. so I'm just trying to show you that that the closer the, the planet is that's causing the effect, uh it has a stronger uh effect on the tides because there's a bigger factor difference in gravity on the sides of the planet. Okay. Um all right. So the moon has a greater is closer to the earth and there's a greater difference on the sides uh, of the earth's uh, gravity. Okay. Now, um we're not exposed to tides too much, but if you know, uh there's not just one high tide and one low tide uh a day, there's two. Okay. Uh, why would there be two high tides and two low tides? If there's only one bulge and the earth is rotating through this bulge, uh, so the bulge always stays, by the way, facing the, the moon. The earth is rotating through the bulge. It's kind of interesting to think about. Um, so, uh, there are actually, anyway, there are actually two high tides. Um, and what would cause the other bulge? So, uh, and the, the thing is, if the moon simply, uh, if the uh, moon simply rotated around the Earth, uh, and the Earth just kind of stood there, there would just be one one tide, okay. But the center of gravity, remember, uh, of this, it, it does, it's not just the moon orbiting the uh, the uh, the the Earth. This is actually a, a two mass system that's rotating, okay, and it's rotating about its center of mass. And the uh, the center of mass uh, is not at the center of the Earth because the Moon has mass and it's shifting the mass, the center of mass away from that. So the um, the Earth actually kind of wobbles on its orbit, uh, and it's this wobbling which kind of uh, pushes water out into the uh, the second uh, the second bulge, um, and that's what causes the uh, the second bulge is the Earth wobbling on its uh, orbit. Okay, uh, as it as the orbit as the moon and uh, uh, Earth rotate. Okay, um, it's the inertia of the water, uh, not wanting to uh, always wanting to go in a straight line, but constantly being pulled in a circle. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a map. Uh, see if you can image, let's figure out what this is a map of. And this is a map of the entire uh, world. Uh, here's the United States. This, it's a little bit weird because the colors are not of the uh, continents, but of the uh, the ocean. Here's South America and here's Africa. Uh, this is a map of how intense the tides are. Uh, so blue is pretty low intensity. So around Florida and the Caribbean, it's a pretty small effect. But up here uh, on the west side of Canada and uh, some of Alaska, uh, the tides are quite a bit more intense. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. So an object that goes in a circle never speeds up, even though a force is constantly applied. Why? Okay. Uh, remember in order to speed up, I need to change energy. In order to change energy, something has got to do work. Okay. Um, and if an object is simply traveling around in a constant circle and it's being pulled towards the center, okay, if this is my force and this is the tangential velocity, they're always perpendicular. So if the, if the force and motion are perpendicular, no work is being done. There's no change in velocity. That should hopefully ring a little bit of a bell here. Uh, only a force that's parallel to the motion can do work. All right. Um, if the Earth traveled in a perfect circle, it would never speed up or slow down because, okay, um, because um, um, the force in motion would be perpendicular. Okay. If the Earth was given an ex little extra speed, it would get a little further away from the sun. Never mind my, my scrawlings here. Um, and so if I gave it a little push, it would move away from the sun, then it would start to slow down, okay? And then it would slow down, and then it would slow down, okay? Uh, and it would reach this, this uh, high point, okay? Um, and then it would start to speed up on the other side. So it would be in an elliptical orbit, okay, with the sun at one foci. 
most planets uh, follow pretty uh, circular orbits, I believe. Uh, they're not perfectly circular, but um, they are somewhat circular. Um, so, uh, but we're going to look at uh, an object such as a uh, uh, a comet or something that, that follows more of a uh, uh, elliptical orbit. So we're going to look at here's an elliptical orbit. So here, uh, the red arrow is the direction of motion. Okay, uh, and the motion is always tangent to the uh, to the curve. Okay, uh, the length of the arrow represents the speed. So here it's moving the fastest, and here it's slowing down, getting shorter. Here it's moving the slowest, okay, and here it's getting faster again on the side of the, uh, the the spin, okay, and finally moving the fastest back at this low point, okay. Um, the blue arrow represents the the force of gravity on the object. Uh, the the length represents the strength of the force, and the direction is to the center of the sun, okay. Um, so here the force of gravity is the strongest when it's the closest, then it's getting shorter and weaker, and then finally uh, the weakest um, and when it's at the furthest part. Okay. Um, so what I've done here is I've broken uh, the force of gravity into uh, components that are parallel to motion and perpendicular to motion. Okay. So the part that's perpendicular, so here's the force of gravity, and I've broken it up into components, one perpendicular and one parallel. Okay. Um, so this component of gravity is perpendicular to the motion, which means it's going to cause it to turn, and this is still curving, so it's still turning. Okay. This component of gravity is opposite of motion. Okay. What is this going to do to its, uh, to its motion, this, this force that's opposite the direction of motion? It's going to cause it to slow down, okay? All right, um, and and um, so and if we look at this portion here, uh, I've broken into a component that's uh, perpendicular and parallel. So this component is going to cause it to turn, and what's this component going to do? It's pointed in the same direction as the motion. It's going to cause it to speed up, okay? So it's slowing down on this side and it's speeding up on this side, okay? Um, where does the force of gravity do no work on the Earth? Okay. The force of gravity does no work where the force and motion are purely perpendicular, which is at the very low point and at the very high point, okay? Here they're not perpendicular uh, because there's, there is a component that's in the direction or opposite the direction, so here it's doing work on the um, on the object causing it to slow here it's doing work and causing it to speed up okay uh, so I'm just kind of trying to wrap up some loose ends on this final slideshow uh, this is the last uh, slide video before the uh, test which will uh, which will be in in the notes when that's when that's going to be uh, okay so um, if I shoot an object up Okay, the more kinetic energy it starts with, the more potential energy it ends up with before it falls back down. It's kind of a fancy way of saying the faster I shoot something up, the higher it's going to go before it falls back down. Okay, so if I shoot it faster, it'll go higher and then fall back down. Okay, if I shoot it even higher or faster, it'll go even higher before it falls back down. But is there a speed at which the object would never come back down? Okay. This is known as the escape velocity. Uh, it is the speed at which you can uh, shoot a, uh, an object uh, from the surface of the, uh, of the planet or whatever it is you're talking about so that it'll never come back down. It'll just keep always moving away. Okay. Um, so for the Earth, uh, this is 11,200 meters per second. Okay? If you shoot something up at that speed, uh, it doesn't need a rocket or an engine or anything to keep moving upwards. It'll just keep moving upwards and never come back down. So you could shoot a rock at that speed, and it would uh, it would come back. It would never come back. So make a mental note of that number, eleven thousand two hundred. Um, so it might be a test question on that number. I don't do that too often, make you memorize stuff, but keep keep in mind that number. Okay. Uh, and that is it for the, uh, the, the notes for this unit. Um, enjoy your evening and do the worksheet.